The overall goal of this procedure is to visualize living neutrophil granulocytes and extracellular DNA nets in a lung that has been recently infected with a fungal pathogen. First, mice that are positive for EGFP in their neutrophil population are infected with canidia that are also fluorescently labeled. Next, the infection is allowed to develop over 7 hours, after which the infected animal is sacrificed. Then. The lungs of the infected animal are filled with low-melting agarose to facilitate sectioning by vibratome. Finally, a thick slice of the infected lung tissue is acquired via vibratome, and lung neutrophils, DNA nets, and fungal elements are imaged. Ultimately, high-resolution still images or movie sequences of granulocytes in live lung tissue can be obtained through multicolor two-photon microscopy. The main advantage of this method over existing technologies is that the immune cells responsible for clearing the infection can be observed directly within the uh, natural environment. This can be done during the process of net formation and fungal killing and thus allows a much less artifactual analysis of neutrophil physiology. I invented this technique when Matthias annoyed me with his burning questions regarding the in vivo relevance of my prior in vitro findings and I will present this technique in the next couple of minutes. To generate swollen canidia of the environmental mold Aspergillus fumigatus, add 5 milliliters of medium to a 6-well cell culture plate. Then, transfer 2 times 10 to the 7th resting canidia to the plate and incubate the spores for 7 hours at 37 degrees Celsius in 5% carbon dioxide in a BSL-2 facility. After the swelling period, fluorescently label the spores by adding 10 microliters of calciflor white stock solution to each well. Following